Hi, I'm Kathleen Murphy from Murph and E Unfiltered, Zero BS Business Talk. And today I'm here with my co-host, Elliot Grossman. Hi, Elliot. Hi, Murph. How are you? I'm doing great. Good. Well, today for our first show, we're going to talk about motivation, which we both know a little something about. And we're going to talk about, um, as a focus, what motivates people? So let's let's just dive in and, and start uh, chatting away about the topic. Work yeah, for let's you? do it. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. So let me ask you this: What motivates you, Elliot? Yeah, well, it's it's different now, right? So when you're younger yes. and you're just getting out of school or you're in school, what motivates you to get good grades or to please your parents and to try to be in a, a crowd that makes you feel good? As you get a little bit older, things change, right? Yes. You get into the workforce, and right. then you uh, have a family, maybe, and, and you kind of things get motivated differently. So you have to separate the professional motivation and try to stay, you know, personally motivated in different ways. And it just changes as you get older. What about you? What motivates you? So I would say the same thing. I, I do separate the personal from the professional, and I realized I had to do that probably about. 10, 15 years ago, I realized that um, they really needed to be separated. And a couple of years ago, I decided they needed to be separated even more so uh, when I went off and started my own business. And uh, I would say what motivates me is working with people and motivating people. I, how ironic, yeah. right? I, I love motivating individuals, but in, in particular teams. That, that really is my specialty, working with teams to get them to uh, be their best mm -hmm. and to do that on a, a regular basis. And because I'm a Gallup certified StrengthsFinder coach, uh, I use that as my platform to help people um, with the assistance of becoming motivated by knowing what their top five strengths are. And we know what your top five strengths are. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You were <laughs> nice enough to uh, take me through the, uh, 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 through the Gallup uh, survey, testing and survey yes, and all exactly. that good stuff. And I got I to know. see your motivation firsthand when we worked together previously. And it was, it was just different. It was a different way in a professional atmosphere to see the way you interacted with people. And what a great job and the respect that people kind of looked at you and said, wow, Kathy actually knows what she's talking about. And you don't have to be a jerk <laughs> about it. She was professional no. and handled herself nicely and you smiled and you were genuine and that was great. And so you were on the sales side of the business, and I, I was on the marketing side of the business. So oftentimes at companies, those two departments are not necessarily as friendly as, as one might imagine that they could be. And But yet we were able to, I think, through you have an amazing way with being a, a comedic person in I, I especially stressful situations. Could you situations. say that again? Yeah, just keep saying it. <laughs> And, and so I think it's really important to have a sense of humor and to not take yourself too seriously, which is, I think, part of being motivated or helping to stay motivated by wanting to go to work to be with the people that you're with. And I think I got to a point professionally where um, when we started you know, going different in different directions at, at various companies that we're at, and I didn't have that sort of camaraderie that you and I had, mm -hmm. It just, it wasn't the same and I was so much less motivated and that was something that I realized I had to seek out and wanted to help other people with. That was really an aha moment for me. Yeah, it's, it, and the aha moment is different. So you, we parted ways at our company, we both went different directions and what I found interesting and we stayed connected mm -hmm. and you were a great sounding board and, and great at giving ideas and creativity and, and really helped me through the process. But what I found interesting throughout the different companies, um, not only the sales and marketing team continue to butt heads, but how people just took themselves so seriously and they made did. themselves so unlikable <laughs> where, well, they, they became That's unlikable, true. That's where true. Uh, just on the sales and the marketing side, right. and, and you never did that. So it was great to hear you going in your direction and doing what you're doing now. Thank you. Thank you. Well, one of the things that I like to say that I do differently as as a, a person that has had a 25 plus year career in marketing is that I also speak sales. I speak marketing. I understand the marketing world, but I, I have a very strong sense of what it's like to be a salesperson because I always 
tried to put myself in the shoes of the salespeople. And I think that that was a huge differentiator for me in terms of what I did that, that maybe you saw unlike maybe a lot of the other marketers yeah, that you would work with. A- in the absolutely. Past. And I'm sorry to interrupt, but early on, yeah. I was able to see it. Good. And I remember we used to take walks around the building, <laughs> right? Sure and did. Whether it was 30 degrees or 100 degrees, Didn't we matter. would walk around the building because we both needed to get out. That's right. And clear our head and vent. Yes. And what I found is you, you would say to me, I've sold before. Yes. yes. And that's such a difference from the, the way that. that you know, the, the marketing teams would say it and they didn't understand how we would try to motivate people, salespeople, and you did. I, and that was the difference. It, it really, um, I think, is essential for a marketing person at some point in their career to either, even if it's for a short period of time, to step out of their comfort zone and to be put into a sales capacity of any kind, whether it's being a business development rep, whether it's sort of in the middle of the sales cycle, or being a closer, and or maybe being an account representative where you're going to be dealing with the challenges of trying to keep that customer happy. Sure. Whatever aspect of the sales process you might want to dance around and be in, I think is critically important as a skill set for you to be a really strong marketer and to have that sort of uh, je ne sais quoi that you described what I have in terms of what I can do working with sales teams, but it really stemmed from the fact that I had true sales experience. Yeah. That, and, it, yep, for sure. And so let's let's talk about um, different things that people can do to remain motivated because we know that going to work each day isn't always Shangri-La when you show up. It's not always a lot of fun and there are many challenges. There are all kinds of pressures. What are some of the things that you say might recommend to somebody in terms of an idea or ideas that you have to help them to stay motivated, uh, uh, especially on those days that they're really struggling. Sure. Well, you know, I I spent a number of years in the software world. I spent a number of years in advertising and radio and television and and it hard businesses, really hard business. A lot of rejection. A lot of rejections always, day after day. And, And early on, when I was managing kids say, how do I, younger people say, new hires, even some of the people that have worked for a while and, and they, everybody gets in a rut. Every salesperson gets in a rut. Say, what, how do you stay high energy? How do you continue to go? Because it's not the end of the world. And a client can, can sense that yes. on the other end of the phone or in person. So have fun with it and what motivates you. Think about the positive things before you go ahead and get in front of the customers, before you go ahead and make the call. You know, you don't need five pages of notes. What you need to do is be yourself and feel good. I hired people for their personality, obviously for their intellect, yes. and what I thought they could bring to the table. Right. Um, and that's always a question I ask. First interview, not down the line. First interview, first question. What's your first question? What motivates you? Why do you want, not why do you want to sell? Don't tell me I want to be in your job in five years. Right. Don't tell me. What motivates you? And, and oftentimes it's not necessarily just about the money and or the title and or the aspiration to be in your role or my role, right? It's got to be something else because those things are just not going to be enough to get you through the bad day that you might be having when you show up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen, the money, and you'll talk to 99% of salespeople and sales uh, uh, leaders will tell you the money is obviously a big factor. Yes. But getting out of bed every day when you already have plenty of money, that's not what drives the sales leaders. They drive to be the best. Yes. Right? And whether it's fear of losing. I used to love hiring people that were super competitive Mm -hmm. and said, I hate losing (laughs) because Losing hurts more than the joy of winning. True. It's kind of that professional gamblers. They say l- the win, yes. that high of the win, yes. lasts for about six seconds. Mm-hmm. But the low of the loss stays with you a long time. It does. And, and the motivation, how you motivate yourself should be about, in, in my opinion, and, and again, people that, that we like to bring on in sales teams, is about the motivation that says, I'm not going to lose to you. 
Right. And if you reject me, I'm going to go look at your top 10 competitors and I'm going to get them on board and we're going to show you what you lost. I want a competitive fire and a competitive nature as motivation. Sure. What do you think about being able to monetize someone's passion? So let's just say somebody's figured out what their passion is. Tell me about, and let's both talk about this, people that we've come across who've been able to do that really well. And I'm going to toss out the first person that I can think of yeah. that most people are familiar with because of the fact that he's achieved a certain amount of status, and that's Tony Robbins. Mm -hmm. So he's clearly somebody who's very passionate about helping and motivating people like I am. He does it entirely differently than I do, but he's someone who has absolutely figured out the formula to taking his passion and monetizing it in a, a brilliant way. And so how about it, it, yeah, an well, from your side? Well, that's a great point, right? Tony Robbins, and he's been incredibly successful for a long time. Long time. So you look at the leaders nowadays, right? Mm -hmm. Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, sure. right? Mm -hmm. Shows up to work in ripped t-shirt and jeans, and he's got his you know casual shoes, and he's unshaven, and he's a leader, and he's passionate about it, and he's got followers because he's just himself. He is. That's the difference. People respect him because he's himself, and I think that's what motivates him is to say, "Hey, I'm no better than any one of you. This is what you could do if you 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 know feel like you want to put the time and energy in and the effort into just being yourself and be intelligent. I mean, what about you? I mean, you're doing your market me too business is doing great and you're doing great things. Thank you. What has motivated, you know, you know what inspires you to do this? What's the passion that the monetized part is not what partially obviously drives you, but what's the other part, your passion? So my number one strength is positivity. And I also have a strength that's called woo, which means winning others over, which wouldn't be a surprise to you necessarily. So I'm driven by being around people and Woo! helping people. That's right. Got it. Okay. Exactly. All right. Just like yeah, that. Yeah, just like that. All right. <laughs> Not only can you spell it, W-O-O, yeah, but you yeah, can have yeah. some fun with it. Well, with sounds. UMass like, Education, you know I could spell that. And in UMaine, yeah. go Black Bears. Woo. And uh, precisely. So I'm motivated by making sure that I am working with the strengths that I've been given. And when I was in my full-time marketing career, I didn't feel like I could bring that, that same passion and use those same strengths. I just wasn't allowed to. I was much more constrained. And, and so I think it's critically important to know what you're good at. You and I talked about this when mm. you were looking for a different direction to go in. And I oh. said... One of the things I said to you, and I know that you'll remember this, and you, you responded back to me in an email after you changed your direction. You said, Murph, the number one thing that I'm so happy about is that in this new position that I'm in, I can be myself. Mm. I don't think that you've been able to be yourself for a long time. When we worked together, I think I saw that you were yourself, mm -hmm. shades of it. Right. I'm hoping this new role, and it sounds like it, that you're allowed to actually be yourself. And that's why they hired you. Yeah, and that's precisely right. And you talk about passion to monetize. Obviously, it's great to be out there and driving revenue and making money and being a sales leader and doing the right things. Mm -hmm. But to be able to, uh, that's what got me out of bed. I told you, you know, yes. like, I, I don't sleep great, right? So I get up at 3.30, 4 in the morning. I okay. watch the news, jump in the shower. Today, I was at my first customer at 6.10 <laughs> in the morning. And that's they're up 12 and running. hours ago. Yeah, but it's okay. Right. Because that's the passion that, that yes. I love. Right. I know the money's coming with it. I it, don't just get out of bed just because, hey, you right. know, woo. It, it, I just get out it. of bed because uh, I enjoy it. And when you're happy, the motivation kind of comes along. It's in your back pocket all the time because it's knocking on your shoulder, right? You've got the, the old story about the, 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 the devil and the, and the yes. you know, the good person, angel, the bad person, the angel. On right. Side. Exactly. And, and that's what keeps me motivated. So what happens when somebody loses interest? You know, maybe they think they found their passion, but um, I know I talk to people about this all the time because they, they get to a point when they feel like they hit a wall. They, they say, 
I was having so much fun and then all of a sudden I went to work one day and I just didn't want to be there anymore. And I think that there are certain careers where people feel like they get burned out. Yeah. They're just working so hard. I know that happens a lot in the financial services industry. Mm -hmm. I know that happens a lot in healthcare, for example, because people um, have such intense positions that they can't help but just flame out. So do you have any tricks that yeah, you've I, used in the past to, to maintain your level of excitement and for wanting to show up with your best self each day at, at, in whatever it is that you're doing? Yeah, so it's interesting. I was talking to a friend of mine who's a emergency room nurse. Oh, perfect. And my daughter's going into the nursing field. And I was talking to a, a good friend of mine who's married to a friend of mine and, and I talked to her as, as an ER nurse. And I said, how do you do it every day when, you know, you stay motivated to do the good things, but there's a lot of bad. Right. There's a lot of bad things that are going on in the world and coming into the hospital and you see it. She said, the motivation that keeps me going is maybe that one good out of the hundred. Oh. And I started th about the hundred bad things that are happening. So the 99 bad things, that one good thing brings a smile and we all as a team get to, to come together. Well, for me, I think it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Whether and, and you know this because we work together. Yes. It wasn't a I win, it was a we win. We win. Always. Right. And for me, that's what has continued my professional career. I get more motivated to see people I, that I work with succeed and close big deals or get promotions or on the marketing field, come up with these ideas and creative solutions that are that are solid and that customers say, wow, that's incredible. Right. I, uh, I think, uh, that's what drives it. I think it's really important to be on the lookout to inspire others or to put others in positions where they can succeed and to not always try to be looking for that, that attaboy or that trophy for yourself. I think there's so much more satisfaction as in evidenced by your nursing friend by helping others. And, and I think that that's something else that people sometimes just forget. It's such a simple solution, but see whatever it is that you can do, regardless of the position that you're in, yeah. to try to see what you can do to maybe even make someone's day a little bit better, it, for example. It doesn't absolutely. matter what industry you're working in, it, you can do that. Well, and it does transfer over to our personal lives. It absolutely does. So, you know, I live in a town that's a fairly small town and it's very frustrating because the same volunteers, whether it's in sports, whether it's at the high school, whether it's community events, whether it's service projects, it's the same people involved in, 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 in helping. And I would get frustrated by it. And I'd say, well, why am I getting frustrated? Right. It motivates me. Yes. I love coaching. I love being part of it. I don't need the other 12,000 people in this town to jump in and do that. <laughs> this is what motivates me. And when you start talking to people, it's the same thing. Church leaders, synagogue leaders, coaches in these communities, no different in our personal lives, right? No, no. And, and you really can't separate the two. Um, and, and I think, but you have to strike a balance. I think it's critically important to make sure that you're not you know, helping everybody just only in your professional life. I think it's important to strike that balance in your personal life as well. And it's hard to do that when people are working the amount of hours that they're working these days, but it is possible. Anything's possible. It's just a matter of being creative or more creative with your schedule. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, I just, I, I, I know that you've, you've found this to be the case. And, and there's, there's some kind of a, a, an old sort of statement that goes something like, if you want to get something done, ask a really busy person to help you because they'll be able to help you get it done. If you ask somebody who's sitting around who seems to have all the time in the world, forget it. They're not likely going to be able to help you, which that's is right. rather ironic. Yeah, but isn't it crazy? I guess yeah, that's it's, just it's, kind it's, of how it goes. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. So I... I you know, we get to a stage in our life, and you get to a stage now, you, and I was so happy to hear a couple of years back when you said, I'm branching out. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting doing out this of this on corporate my own. world. Right, I'm getting out of the corporate <laughs> world. Yet you found a way to stay motivated by 
not really getting out of the corporate world. No, because... By, by doing good things in the corporate world, what you're doing now. Exactly. So your getting out of bed is different than my getting out of bed. It so is. So talk about that. For me, I feel like because my number one strength is positivity, that I can come into companies and give them a dosage of my positivity with the work that I do with their individuals or their teams. And they clearly see that. They feel my energy. They see my energy. Um, a array of whatever, whatever you want to call it, sunshine. Um, <laughs> wow. I, I, I'm not sure oh, what, how wow, it, it could Murphy, be the yeah. that's, that's coming out. Let's go with a ray but of sunshine. We'll go with a ray of sunshine. Yeah. But I was just talking to one of my clients the other night, and she was telling me that she want, she's her team has been asking her, when is Kathy coming back in? Because we need her. We need an infusion from her. And I thought, wow, that's kind of cool. If I could only bottle that. Oh, so, of course, but isn't you go home and you're like, you take a deep breath, and whether you're having a glass of wine or chatting with your husband, and you say, this is why, this is what motivates me. It, it to so the next is. stage and the next stage. It's a little thing. You told me a while back we were chatting. You said you should... If you're feeling a little down, start, whether it's mentoring or doing something. Mentoring, key. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and, and I've tried to do that by taking some younger people that I know that are getting into the corporate world and really kind of uh, doing those things. That is so motivating and so rewarding, and that's why I love to see you doing what you're doing now because I know you're fulfilled. Yes. And you're rewarded and you're motivated to continue to do better things. I really am. And so in terms of, you know, wrapping up our conversation today, if, uh, you know, I, I know that it's probably frowned upon in the corporate world to be daydreaming at work, but I think it's important for people to, to focus a little bit of attention in terms of what they're daydreaming about, because sometimes that's, in fact, what will motivate them. So not sure if you uh, have a, a, a thought about that uh, sort of sentiment, but uh, daydreaming at work. Yeah. Ever done it before? You know, well, I think we've all done it, right? We daydream and we're thinking about, you know, I play a lot of golf. So we think about, okay, I'm going to play this weekend. Am I going to play well? You know, whatever. But it, it, it's more, I think, of a, a, I try to stay as focused and as motivated as I can, even when I'm having fun. Sure. Right? So well, people, having fun, that's good well, all I know, the time. But people used to think, well, this guy's never serious because all he's doing is smiling and sure. laughing and clowning around. I'm not really clowning around. What I was trying to do was motivate everybody to yes. stay engaged and, and, and work together as one. Yes, absolutely. You know, what and about you? What are you daydreaming about? Book number two? I mean, what are you daydreaming about? <laughs> uh, yes, getting book number two out the door uh, probably later this year, yep. possibly into even 2020, um, working on titles right now. So yep. we'll, we'll see how that, that yep. uh, pans out. But a um, lot of work to do, but I'm excited to bring book two out probably within the next six months is, yeah. is what I'm going to commit to right now. <laughs> okay. And uh, so one last thing, uh, you know, is there is there something that you can share with people in terms of uh, what might be a spring that they can use in their life to infuse or increase their energy by being motivated some way? One tip that like you walk in at the beginning of the day and you just go, I just can't do it today. What is that one thing that you do and I'll tell you what I do? Yeah, well, I, I, I always try to do this and, and then you kind of spurred it back into me. And I know this sounds crazy, we're in front of the camera, but that's the truth, you spurred it into me. I try to do something good every day for somebody, right. whether it's personally, professionally, uh, going to the dump and taking my trash to the sure. dump and bringing a woman at the dump coffee because sure. I know how she likes right. little things like that. Right. Uh, doing some extra stuff for people at work that if they're overcrowded, let me help you out. Sure. You know, sure. I don't mind getting up in the morning. So if I'm up already doing it, those types of things go a long way. They do. So I, I'm with you. I do that on a very regular basis. And I and I love it when people don't find out that it was me. Of Sometimes course. I, I like to be that sort of secret, whatever you want to call it, uh, magic fairy or whatever that's doing good for somebody. But my one trick is mm. if I'm feeling off in the morning, I'll just listen to some amazing, really upbeat music. Uh, one of my favorite songs is Make It Happen by Mar Mariah Carey. And as a matter of fact, before we got on and, and started recording this show tonight, I played that right before I came in here. So play music, work with music, and 
There you go. So uh, that's a that's a wrap <laughs> for us, Ellie. That's our great. first show. That's great. High five. Way to go, Murph. Great Thank job. Thank you. We did it. Great and, job. And uh, looking forward to many more shows. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you.